Welcome to our second segment of our Fall Flower Festival. David is my guest for this round, and we will be providing a flower tour of some amazing flowers perfect for the autumn season. You will get to see stem length, bloom size, and color. In addition, David will be able to provide great tips and advice on how to properly care for and handle these specialty cut flowers to get the most out of your blooms. At 1245, our very own Deanna will be on to talk about how to utilize pre-book to re reduce our wedding season stress. And then at 145, Allison Ellis finishes our day chatting about how to profit on um, price your fall weddings uh, profitably. And as mentioned in the email that we sent out earlier today, the For the Best Viewing Experience, please join us on Facebook or YouTube, and that counts for this session as well. So yes, I am talking to all of my Instagram viewers out there. Hey guys, hey guys, let's see how many of you there are. Uh, not too many yet, we're just getting started, but um, as you're coming on, if you want to jump over to uh, YouTube or Facebook, Facebook, that would be great because again, the sides are going to get cut off. I'm also going to be sharing <laughs> a video um, that David created of the products. So we're going to do that video first, and then David's going to come on live with me and answer your questions. So this one works a little bit differently than um, our first one with Gilberto. And again, just a reminder, if you're looking for replays of today's segments, you can check them out immediately on YouTube and Facebook, and we will be posting a recap of today's event up on our blog for easy reference for you, everyone. Uh, again, before we get started, give us a shout out. Let us know where you are from. Love seeing that. Also, if you have questions while you're watching, even though I'm not going to be asking the questions while you post them, be sure you keep on posting them because then I will ask um, David once he's done going over the flowers. And also just again, um, just a friendly reminder that we have three more stops for this year's Mayish Design Store with um, the floral coach, uh, Amy Balsters. And to get more information, you want to visit mayish.com slash design tour. Design slash tour. I think I said that backwards. Um, so yes, this is our link for our workshop tickets and for you to learn more. So check that out when you get a chance. All right, so I am going to bring up the video. So I'm going to bring up this video. David's going to do his presentation. Um, and then me and David will be live as soon as that is ending. And uh, we'll answer all your questions. So enjoy. Good morning. Welcome to our virtual fall festival. I'm here in Charlotte, North Carolina, where there's a, an absolute plethora of wonderful flowers. Uh, we have a lot of flowers uh, coming from the United States and many locally here in North Carolina. So without much further ado, I'd like to present to you some of the fabulous fall flowers, foliages, fruits, seeds that you can use to, for great effect um, for your autumnal designs and arrangements. So starting off, I'd like to present, this is Cotinus, beautiful burgundy foliage, bushy, fluffy, available pretty much through till Thanksgiving. Wonderful, long, vigorous, robust. This is Cotinus. Um, we wish we had this for all of uh, the fall, but it, this is just coming to the end now. This is a Cotinus champagne with the really beautiful smoke bush flower head. Um, but this is coming to an end. So if you need some like now or in the next week or so, please ask for this, but it is coming to an end. Beautiful foliage. Here we have, this is one of my favorites. This is Agonis Flexuosa. Uh, there's several varieties of this. I think this one is called After Dark. Beautiful, originally from Australia, where they call it Peppermint Myrtle. Very nice, Agonis Flexuosa. Here we have really technically a fruit. I love these. These are baby artichokes. Really nice, deep burgundy, great sculptural element for your uh, design work. 
Uh, it also comes in green in this size and of course the larger ones and and still available though going out of season are the the blue flowering artichokes uh the blue cyan color from which artichoke gets its latin name cyanus but look for these gorgeous burgundy ones yes as we go into fall we get a lot of fruits here is a classic this in fact was discovered by Meriwether Lewis uh, near in Missoula, Montana. And some of the seeds of this made its way back to Jefferson, who called it, christened it Snowberry, as it were. This is still not quite ready for full production, but you can see here a couple of the snowberries starting to form. Um, and this will be available through till, um, through until uh, November. And it also comes in a blush pink. Love the fruits. Another fruit, a classic. Uh, this is, these are rose hips. This is a hybridized one. I believe it's called Tutti Frutti. Very nice, has a lot of hips on each lateral. Each stem is loaded. Nice blushed bronze rose hip. Good item, a change up from regular roses. Very nice. This is grown in the United States. Very nice. Here we have, I also love these a lot. These are coming in from, from Oregon. This is um, Viburnum trilobum, uh, or otherwise known as Viburnum opulus variety Americanum. Great fruit. When you get fruits this mature, a lot of the leaves start to go off, as you would see in nature. That's why you need your careful editing with your uh, cutters or your knife. Take off the leaves that are damaged. But you, a fantastic, brilliant detail for, for design work. I love that. Uh, uh, viburnum berry red. And through the season, we will also have yellow and green. Going over to beautiful foliage from California. This is Grevillea Ivanhoe. It's really used for its foliage, um, a nice green with touches of, of, of blush and, and pink and, and edges of red. Very nice, striking architectural foliage. I love that, Grevillea Ivanhoe. Also, we have here a Grevillea, flowering Grevillea. Comes in several colors, orange, yellow, peach, sometimes though rarely pink, um, many, many varieties. This I think is called orange marmalade, but there are many, and we just refer to it as flowering grevillea. Beautiful product, love that. Uh, the seed heads, the amaranthus, the cereals. There's many, many amaranthus. This one is coming from California. Uh, of course, we have the hanging amaranthus, uh, and the uprights. This is hot pan biscuit. I love it. Um, it was a prize cereal of the Incas. Uh, today, a classic design element. Uh, this is a sorghum, often called broom corn. Nice cascade feature of sort of bronze, brown berries, fruits. It's a cereal product, but makes a very good autumnal element in it for your design work. Um, I'm a big fan of this one. This is, love it. This is rosemary. I think it's a great underused foliage, great for this time of year and provides a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Very nice. That's rosemary. And next to this, we have, uh, this is called Aussie pine. It should never ever be confused with Australian pine which is an invasive species, uh, especially in the South. Horrible, wispy pine, but this is a great element. Um, will go somewhat bronze later in the year, uh, but great for this time of year as well. Uh, it's called Aussie pine. These, love these. These are really, you know, we've, we've dissed these for years, uh, marigolds. They used to be what I call cheap and cheerful, but really look at that intensely saturated color <coughs> for your designs that are going for 
bold, saturated tones. These marigolds, fantastic. Look at these, rather big, coming from California. I love them. Uh, I wouldn't put these in the cooler, a cool place, optimally around 55 degrees, because it is a subtropical flower. And in, at that temperature, the foliage will hold up a lot better. Uh, I would be inclined to disbud a lot of these little buds. They're using unnecessary energy. And if you don't need them for your design, get rid of them. Wonderful. Tagetes erecta. These are marigolds. Um, going on to the classics, some more for the fall. We have sedum. This is sort of a green element if you want. It's cut tight. You can just see bits of pink coming here. Or sedum where I prefer it. It's cut more open and gives you that wonderful blush pink. It is a succulent. Um, very nice. Sedum pink. These are cute. Love these little things. These are gomfrina. Come in a variety of colors. Strawberry, orange, hot pink. Hardy, you can dry them as well. Um, just wonderful little accents for, for sort of bucolic country designs. Casual dinner parties. Very, very nice. Accents of bold color. Little pops. I love those. Gomfrina. Here we have Asclepias, just coming into season. They'll also be coming from Holland, but these come from Oregon. Uh, a little tip, uh, these are cut too tight in my opinion. You really want them cut open so the flower will develop properly. At this stage, probably not much uh, floral action. You do get little sort of dynamic sculptural forms, but really uh, ask your sales associate for more open cut. That's Asclepia. Uh, here we are. look at these. These are wonderful dahlias. These are coming from right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Love these. They come in all types, shapes, colors. Um, just about every one of our locations has a local provider. So do ask for these going into the fall. Um, dahlias, I mean, they're great. Again, this is another flower, better off not in a cold cooler, better off around 55 degrees. Also another sort of part of a subtropical flower. Uh, absolutely outstanding, I love these. Um, and they are available, only available until first frost. Uh, but we do have a supplier, a, re a reliable supplier now in Colombia, who is um, giving us Dahlia, so you will be have, able to have them all the way through Thanksgiving and all the way through the winter and beyond. Uh, so do take advantage of all the wonderful local flowers available. Here's a really dynamic sculptural element. These are Scabiosa stellata, but you don't get them like this in the United States. Massive flower, well formed. This is what they call a seed head. It's actually a ornamental bract and the flowers are inside each bract. And as you can see, the flowers here are good and viable and fresh. Maybe I can get up to the lens there. You can see inside the little green flowers in each capsule. Scabiosa stellata. Yes, they are grown in the United States. We get these from one of our preferred vendors in Ecuador and we have these all year long. Strong sculptural, and I'm going to be honest, these are probably the best um, examples I've seen grown anywhere in the world. So take advantage of that. Okay, moving along. So that, that's our first import uh, I've shown. <coughs> I want to show you these. These are one of my personal favorites. Little Dianthus, Cottage Garden, Carnation. They're in the, our system as Dianthus Clove, and the fragrance is wonderful. It's one of the few carnations that has that old-fashioned, hardy clove fragrance. Beautiful, beautiful flower. I love these. These are coming from Ecuador. The definition, the limning of the burgundy, hot pink color with white on the margins of each petal. Love it. Do take advantage of that. Dianthus clove in our system. Look at these. This is something I've been working on for a while. Finally, I have got them. Look at the size of those. This is what we call 
an open cut scabiosa. The only way to get the full benefit of these flowers is if they are cut open. Growers are loath to do it because they think they're sort of weak, uh, they won't ship well, but whether it's from a farmer in the United States or from overseas, this is how a, I mean, this is what a scabiosa should look like, please. I mean, beautiful, large size, uh, impressive. Uh, we do need a fair amount of notice for this because the grower has to leave them in the field to open up. Uh, hopefully that'll change as we convince more people to, to shop for these in the open cut stage. But to be honest, they, they do have to move through to the customer and go into water quickly, which at Mayesh we are able to do. So that is a beautiful scabiosa. I love that. I've got these wonderful flowers here. Look at these beautiful pom-pom ranunculus, large, hardy. Because they've got so much green in these, they're very strong. A lot of chlorophyll maintains. And for this time of year, I think these are great for autumnal arrangements, even the white, great for wedding work. Because at this time of year, you know, the leaves are changing, flowers are changing. They, 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 these are part of the transition for, um, part of the transition for uh, autumn. So do take advantage of these. These are called pom-pom ranunculus. Uh, please do ask your associate about these. Let's moving along here. Gonna go to do some roses. These are roses coming from Ecuador, some of the new items coming to market. Probably one of the most popular ever. This is from Rosa Prima. This is called Moab. Wonderful, rich peach color, hints of, of blush, pink, little, little undertones of yellow, but basically a dynamic peach, hardy, wonderful color, somewhat high pointed, high tea rose, but still, you look at the color, the strength, the stem length, beautiful foliage, lovely, lovely rose, Moab. For the more sophisticated palette, I, here's a rose I really like. This is called Zen. It's a sort of chartreuse, dirty yellow. And for those complex palettes, it's good. But at this time of year, also, you know, a sort of somewhat bronzing verdigris yellow, little dirty, opens a little more bronze in the middle, a little more brown, I would say, in the middle as it opens all the way. So look for this too. This is from Ponte Treza. This is Zen. Look at this thing. This is new, somewhat limited, but we can get a few of these. Again, this is from Rosa Prima. This is called Copper Kiss, a very dirty sort of pumpkin, spicy pumpkin saffron orange, but in that classic garden form, very strong, very hardy, fabulous vase life. Um, so do look for this. Please do inquire with your associates, may a sales associate at your location or if you're shipping, your shipping associate. Look for this copper kiss, wonderful. I've got two new spray roses here. Good for fall, interesting for Christmas especially. This is called Bravo. This is from Natu Floor, loaded with flowers. A very nice red, dark red, uh, somewhat lighter center. I like this one, this is Spray Rose Bravo. And here, look at this. This is the first true red spray rose, probably red rose, because there really isn't anything like this anywhere that I've seen before. It's a true red, like the Coca-Cola can, like uh, Christmas red, Santa Claus red. This one is called That's Red. It's from the Jewel series. Uh, also, this is from Ponte Treza. Look for this red spray rose very nice strong stems lots of flowers on each stem this is only a five stem bunch this is that's red love it love it and last but not least if you do have weddings at this time of year i would like to show you this absolutely phenomenal item you're doing arches arbors and you want some you want some 
Jasmine to cover the whole bovine. You can test tube it and really go a long way. You can use it for runners. It's absolutely spectacular. It's very hardy. This particular bunch here is probably three weeks old and yet it maintains its vigor. It comes with so much flour, yes. Some flour does drop off as Jasmine is one to do, but there's so much flour on it. It just keeps going and going and going. So please take advantage of all these wonderful products for your autumnal offerings. We try very hard at Mayesh to bring elements, flowers, foliages, products you can use in your design work to, to move the ball forward in your personal, um, in your personal uh, work and, and create wonderful designs. And please remember, please contact a sales associate. If you need information on any of these products or any of the products we have, you can get that information. And if you stump them, just insist that they call me, David Dalson, I'll try and give you a more in-depth answer. So there it is here in Charlotte, wonderful fall flowers. And I'm off to Charleston next. So uh, live on Tuesday, I'll be happy to answer any more questions you may have. Take care and thank you for watching. I love movie magic. Hi, David. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm here. I'm in Charleston. Um, and uh, Amy Boss has got her workshop going. And uh, yeah, very exciting. I'm really impressed with North Carolina and South Carolina. Very, very interesting. That's awesome. And speaking of workshops, I believe we have three more dates to go. So guys, if you guys are interested in uh, joining us at one of our workshops, which I hope that you do, um, just go on over to mayish.com and check that out. So David, uh, I also wanted to mention to the audience before we get started that for some reason, the video that, that was playing for like on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube was fuzzy, but completely clean on my end. So I'm not sure what happened, probably some technical difficulty that I'll never understand. So what I'll do for the replay guys, just so you know, is I will swap out the video since I have the video here. Um, so that way it's nice and clean, easy to see. Um, and it's not fuzzy at all. You could hear David great, but the, for some reason, the video piece didn't come through clear. So how are you doing, David? Doing great. Really, really great. It's, uh, I'm impressed by the amount of uh, USA-grown flowers that are available now in, uh, in, in the Carolinas, all over the United States. Um, one thing I would like to focus uh, or mention before we get going is that all the flowers I showed and foliages and, and so forth, they'll be pretty much available right through till Thanksgiving. I would like to point out that there's many super, super flowers that you would go, these are great for fall, but unfortunately, um, towards the end of September, they're no longer available. But I do urge people to take, uh, take advantage of products like uh, Nine Block, Nine Bark, uh, El Diablo, otherwise known as Physocarpus. Um, yes, coming into season right now are the Japanese maples, as Gilbert mentioned earlier. And another thing to think about in fall flowers is, Yes, you can get so many different moods. I mean, Gilbert had that rather darkish mood on his, but remember, you can go bright as well. I mean, Vermont trees turning color are so rich and vibrant. You can go bright, you can go dark, you can go many different directions with the fall flowers, with the autumnal themes at this time of year. But the main thing is there are a lot of amazing American grown flowers available, not to mention the wide array of imports that we offer on a daily basis. So good to know. Thank you, David. So guys, if you have any questions for David, let us know. We have you know a little bit of time to dive into them. David, I had one come through um, from Leah and uh, she wanted to know how long will those types of dahlias be available into the fall? So I know you said most of the stuff will be available. I forget what you just said because I was reading right. things. <laughs> But can, can let us know. Understandable. Yeah. Understandable. So dahlias, as I did mention in the video, they uh, they can't take any frost or freeze of any kind. So normally we say first frost is the end of dahlias. And generally around the United States, uh, that's around October 15th. But we, we do have imported dahlias thereafter. 
So you will be able to have dahlias. Uh, they just won't be U.S. grown. Now, there is a caveat, of course, because with the crazy weather we're having this year, the season could go longer or it could be shorter. But generally, you're looking at the middle of October when USA grown dahlias come to an end. Good to know. And then I just put a link into our comments, guys, um, again, on Facebook and YouTube, uh, Instagram hates businesses, as I've mentioned before. So I can't put that in here while I'm talking live. So hopefully my team member who's listening will do that for us. Um, So check that out. And uh, that's all good to know. Um, I got distracted a little bit when when I was talking because uh, it was Spunky Cat posted a nice comment about your accent. Uh, they say he could be reading answers in an instruction manual. I love his accent. I've never been interested in flowers until now. So welcome, Spunky Cat. If you this is your first, you know, exposure to flowers, welcome. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. I mean, and I hope you uh, really get into flowers. <laughs> And uh, start a business. That would be fantastic. Exactly. And if you love David's voice, we've done a lot of videos with him. He's been on Mornings with me several times. Um, he'll, he does product showcases. So if you want to learn more, we definitely have the videos for that. All right. So I got another question in from Stephanie. I'm trying to find it in here. I can't keep on disappearing. So I'm glad I wrote it down. So Stephanie asks, what's the typical amount of time from when the product is cut to when it's shipped from Mayish and into florist hands? Can you talk a little bit about the logistics of a flower from farm to florist? I absolutely can. And and this is a good time for me to point out that it doesn't matter. You'll see some websites say, you know, we bypass all the channels in Miami and we get it to you in two days. No, not I mean, it's absolutely impossible. First of all, all our growers, and we've had to change the habits of of many farms in Ecuador, you cannot ship flowers on the same day. Flowers need to stabilize. They need to drink for about 24 hours to be in a turgid condition, ready to be packed and shipped and go on its extended journey, which can be like for, for from the farm to our say location in San Francisco, you're talking about five days. Why is that? Well, there's a day taken up by flying. Another day is taken up by USDA inspections in Miami. And then we have a two day truck ride three to LA, a three day truck ride to uh, San Francisco. So you're looking around five days, but these are all in the cold chain, as opposed to stuff that gets, can be FedExed, and can be very, very warm by the time it gets anywhere in the United States. So we do focus on maintaining the cold chain. In Miami, we have a special distribution hub for receiving flowers. Uh, We have cold seals, our tractor trailers back up. We maintain the cold chain all the way. So while five, six, seven days may sound alarming, the way that we at Mayesh handle the flowers, we keep it at a temperature controlled uh, environment and we keep that product at the right temperature. And when it gets to the, say, San Francisco, either will be put in water or delivered right to the customer or the customer will pick up at that location. Uh, I hope that answers the question. It did. That was really, really great. Thanks, David. So my question to you is you obviously had this really great um, showcase. Do you have any tips uh, you can share for extending the lifespan of these fall beautiful blooms? Well, I can. In fact, I was just, uh, I do a presentation before Amy does her main workshop. Let me start by saying care and handling of flowers, I'm going to say 90% of it is straightforward and relatively easy to accomplish. But much like climbing Everest, that last 200 meters to the top or the last 10% in flower care is all about tiny incremental steps that you can make to to improve the, the performance of your flowers. Number one, cleanliness. As my mother used to say, cleanliness is next to godliness. Please make sure all your buckets are clean, your knives are clean, your clippers are clean. And also, clippers and knives, make sure you get them professionally sharpened at least once a month. Because when you're using, especially clippers, if they're not sharp, they will, they will compress, they will, they will 
how do I say, smudge the stem. Right. They, will they don't cut through clean when, when they're not sharp. Right. So you don't get a clean cut. And uh, that, again, inhibits the vascular structure from working correctly. And let's take something like dahlias. I'd be inclined to cut the dahlia with a surgical blade, an exacto knife, to make sure that you really maintain the structure of the cambium labor of the vascular stem in pristine condition. But really all those little bits. Also make sure your water is clean, make sure you check the pH of your water, uh, that make sure it's between 5.5 and 6.5. Anything above seven is not gonna work well for your flowers at all because it'll be too, what we call base, too alkaline, too salty as it were. And you don't really wanna be below four, but slightly acidic is, is the, the sweet spot where you wanna be for most flowers. And if I can say last but not least, here's another step. Um, cut your flowers always on the bias. Why is that? Because when you put flowers in the bucket, you're always gonna have the tip resting on the bottom of the bucket. If you cut them at right angles, the stem, again, something like Helleborus, if it's resting at right angles on the bottom of the bucket, it may not be able to draw water at all because there could be tiny bits of dirt or, or uh, foliage or something in there that inhibits the uptake of water. And um, I know I said last but not least, I got one more thing, sorry, Yvonne. No, it's um, okay. When you get your flowers, say they're shipped in, or if you pick them up at a location, please, please, please leave all the wrappers on. Cut the flat, cut the stems, put everything in water with the wrappers on. And if it's something like scabiosa, maybe it came without a wrapper, wrap it up so the stems are all upright. Wrap it up, it'll draw water. Because if you put a flower such as a, 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 an enemy in water and it's hanging over the bucket, it's expending so much energy to lift it up because it has a phototropic tendency to want to be erect. But all the energy gets drained out of the product and you're cutting two, three, four days off the life of the flower. So leave them wrapped, let them draw water for about an hour in the wrapping, become fully turgid, and then unwrap them. And you will gain several days on the life of your flower. Such great advice, David. And right now I'm sharing a link to our flower care guide so that way you can get more care and handling tips. And again, like I mentioned, David's been on our show a whole bunch of time to talk about care and handling specifically. So you can, you can find those videos too up on YouTube, our blog, all of that, all of that. I did, I did get another question from Greens, Flowers and Gifts, if we can answer that real quickly. Um, they ask, should the water treatment be different for the greenery versus fresh flowers? No, I would say basically, no, you want, you want the same thing. You want to keep everything with a nice, clean, precise cut, um, clean water, clean buckets, uh, essentially the same. And always remember any foliage that might be submerged in the water in the bucket, just get rid of that because you, you will, you don't need that at all. And it could uh, make the water dirty. Um, and get pathogens there in the water. So no, basically it's it's going to be whatever the product is, um, you know, you would manage it the same, whether it's a cut flower or a cut foliage. And, and to be honest, it's worth all the extra care, even for the foliages, because uh, it's not just flowers going up in price these days. It's the flower, the fillers and the foliages as well. So yeah, give them all the same precise treatment. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, and guys, thanks for joining us, David. You're amazing. I know you have a lot going on, so I appreciate you fitting us into your very busy schedule while you're traveling around. So appreciate you and always sharing your expert knowledge with us all. Abs absolute pleasure. Live from Charleston, South Carolina. Love it. Good, good, good. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for our second segment of our Fall Flower Festival. I'm ending this live and then I'm going to be starting right back up. There's no break with Deanna Marriott. She's going to be sharing with you lots of tips on how to utilize pre-book and we want to reduce that stress for you guys. So she has a lot of great advice for you. And then finally, Allison Ellis of The Real Flower Business is going to be joining us and she's going to be wrapping up the day uh, starting at 145, talking about profitable pricing. You guys don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for your time and support. I will see you literally in probably two minutes. I just got to set everything back up and I'll be back live. Thanks, David. Thanks everyone for watching. Yeah.
Bye-bye. Bye.